here, 3v3 faction war, Argent Shell Freedux, Space Marines vs Eldar, game 1, blue team. We have Angry Bird plays a Force Commander, very good offense, fights in melee combat, pretty versatile, can tank, disrupt and support with buffs. Alongside, Final Push plays a Tech Marine, starts out range combat, can get a melee weapon, puts up some nice damage, can also support the structures and deal with enemy vehicles quite nicely. Rounding out the blue team is Noisy Elmo as an apothecary support commander that fights in melee combat. Begins with a targeted heal and a passive health regeneration aura. This is Imperial Fist DLC and final push rocking the Legion of the Damned scheme. Red team for the Eldar, all three players going for the Warlock. First up is Adila alongside Tolali. And rounding off the red team is Illothor. These guys are melee commanders, very good mobility and disruption, plus a tank damage with the right war gear. This guy taking shots from scouts and welcome to the new faction wars for 2014 unfortunately had to kind of abandon the old league structure just proved too difficult to get the specific players needed for specific matchups that were required for the league quite difficult to get going with all the different time zones and players playing other games and dealing with their real life stuff so we're gonna go for these isolated games of three, these series of three games, but I will be isolated, not put into a league or anything. This allows me to get faction wars between any two factions because it doesn't matter because there is no league. So you'll hopefully see a lot more of them, albeit perhaps the more popular factions featured more frequently, just the way it is. More people play Space Marines, but should be quite enjoyable, I think. You guys can. Put the results into a league if you want. Howling Banshees here chasing after Tactical Marines. How many times do you see that? These guys already lost the model. And the Tech Marine in retreat and might be a full retreat here for Blue Team. But enough of that. Let's see what's going on. Triple Warlocks. Pretty damn difficult to play against with anything. Let alone Triple Space Marines. So they on expect a lot of pressure here from the Eldar team. Triple Warlocks leading the line is pretty damn scary in first engagements. They have a 2 to 1 cap through the Space Marines though. There's a Destructor nicely hit, hit about 3 or 4 squads there with it. But they are forced off. And Blue Team holding. The Space Marines holding firm. Double Tactical Marines for Elmo. Double Tactical Marines for Angry Bird also. Start to see this a hell of a lot now. In team games, double tacks. Strange how the meta shifts subtly. Even though there's been no changes to Tactical Marines for quite a while. All of a sudden we start seeing this double tax build. Edilus cap in the west side. This is a kind of solo lane. He's up against Angry Bird here. But Angry Bird has drifted to the mid to help force off the Eldar. Look at these Howling Banshees. They have the aspect of strength. Gives them that washout fleet of foot. Health buff and an executioner spear in tier 2. Tech Marine we might see the Master Crafted Bolter for him. Customized bolter, also customized storm bolt. In fact, we do see it for the apothecary. He can try and control one of the warlocks with that. Rangers up though. In fact, rangers up for Twilight and Illithor. That's going to be incredibly annoying because they have no assault marines right now. So many ways for Eldar to, to deal with double tactical marines. I feel if the Eldar player goes one one one, that is Banshee, Shuriken, and Rangers. There's not a whole lot you can do without investing further in Assault Marines or something. Scouts forced off. Those guys had shotguns. Not sure what these Tactical Marines are still doing here in this engagement. Knocked over by Kinetic Pulse. There's a grenade and Banshee's running and that was a nasty engagement for Noisy Elmer. But he does get away. These Marines only lost one model there so that wasn't too bad. Put a bit of pressure on the power. Didn't quite take down the generator though. West side what's going on. Warlock with the Merciless Witchblade, one of the best melee weapons in the game I think, let alone in tier 1. An awesome weapon, does a lot of damage, has an awesome special attack which I think is a power melee special attack. Also drains energy and has that knockback on the ranged attack. It is a fantastic piece of gear, I think it's 35 power though. Howling Banshee's now going after the Force Point who's gone strangely for the Chainsword and Storm Shield. That is an odd choice for me, I think. Against the Warlock. With Banshees. Illadilla does have the Guardian Weapon Team, but even so, I'd much rather get Assault Marines or maybe even 
infiltrate your scouts with a grenade or something, try and force rangers on the field, then punish with the Soul Marines. Devastator is set up for a final push, forcing off those hunting batches. There's a grenade, but down go those scouts. A ranger shot in retreat alongside the Shuriken catapult fire, taking them down. Now the red team are going to try and steal this contested power in mid. Very important power point here on Argent Shelf. Can turn the tide of the game if you can control this for any amount of time. What's going on here? Banshees and Dire Avengers are going to hit power now. Trying to take out those Devastators but they do get away. All three Banshees with the aspect of strength for the Eldar team. Scouts with a Sergeant for Angry Bird. He's going straight to tier 2 as his final push. Who lost his scouts of course. Noisy Elmo investing a bit into his scouts. In fact he has shotguns and a sergeant and that customized storm bolter. Have not seen full auto go off. Rangers here kept in play with the one model since that still retains all of its sniper mechanics. The long range shot, the kinetic pulse, everything. Wartark dropped in. Been seeing her quite a lot recently as well. She recently got a small health buff up to 750. Always feel she's been slightly underused in Elite Mod. She did get a few changes compared to retail. Her buff now has a shorter radius, I believe, but it is slightly more effective at 15% resistance compared to 10%. 371, 445 per entry grenades, of course, are completely different in Elite. They now do far less damage but stun. Warlock in retreat, caught by Tactical Marines, but he'll get away fine. And we have Champion's Robe on Adila's Warlock, incredibly annoying. And we might see Heart of Darkness, the fact that up in Tier 2. Shuriken is going to get pushed by the Force Commander. Yes, there's the defendability. B4-3, 4-4-5. We might see him switch weapon in Tier 2, I feel. Or top forced off. But Red Team capping and have a triple. 330-445. They got f three Ranger squads to deal with here and no Assault Marines. Look at that, there's one volley from those two Rangers. Forcing a heal from the Brother Carry to get their Sergeant as well. Now the Warlock Wayne in without any war gear causing all sorts of problems. These guys behind a shield. Scouts are going to force melee combat on them. No, they're going to force melee combat on the Rangers in fact. Rangers losing a model. Scouts getting very close though. Here come Howling Banshees out of nowhere with their Exarch leading the line there with the spear. The Scouts do get away but there's a grenade and Scouts knocked back as you can see there by the domino effect from those tactical marines getting knocked back. They flew into the Scouts and knocked them back even on the retreat there. 260, 445 is still the triple for Eldar. Angry Bird with a Razorback but it's looking pretty dire otherwise. Adila with Warp Spiders on the way so that Razorback might not last long because we have Executioner on the Banshees. This thing could get a Bright Lance and in fact it is getting a Bright Lance and the Warp Spiders can get their awesome Haywire Grenade. There's the Defend again. Immunity to Suppression for all of these affected units and I think it's an extra 20% range damage resistance so they're tanking quite a lot here. Are right, the Banshees going to go in? Looks like they are. No sign of channeling runes, which would have been incredibly annoying there. Banshees back off. They lost a model. But now the Force Corner doesn't have the energy to use his defend. It does drain energy when it's active. And he is switching to the Thunderhammer here. I thought he might. Those Banshees are going to be incredibly dangerous if he doesn't. Doesn't even have shotgun scouts over here. 210, 445. What's going on mid? It's all kicking off. And they shall know no fear on the tactical means a dreadnought on the field for a final push. He's replaced his scouts also. Double tax forced off from Noisy. Here comes that dreadnought. Two close combat weapons. Wrist mounted flamer. Inspiration on every melee kill. Ouch. Devastators wiped by Ranger play with a very sneaky grenade in there. Excellent play there. Who was that? I think it was Illithor. I think it was. 191445. Dire Avengers with an Exarch gives them the Embolden ability. These guys infiltrated by the hollow fields of the Rangers. See the Dreadnought Inspiration there now buffing the damage of this Tech Marine also gives some suppression resistance. 
and now runs into these guys. Ouch, that was the Emperor's Fist wiping out four models. Those guys just about getting away there. Rangers can't do anything to vehicles, so it's usually a good idea to get one out as soon as you can when you're up against a whole bunch of them. Can he apothecary revive? Yes, he can. He's now level, almost level four, so he's got a level three heal. Tech Marine using his high powered shot, taking out a Banshee and leveling before he retreats out. One, seven, eight, triple four. Whoa! Look at that charge leap by the Autark. Good grief. There's full auto in her face though. Can a Dreadnought finish her off? Bang! One more shot maybe? Bang! No, she gets away. The Banshee's trying to bait the Emperor's Fist there, I think. But it couldn't quite do it. One, seven, eight, four, three, two. Razorback still going, getting repaired by scouts there. Space Marines with a pretty big VP mountain to climb, but this is what they do. They start to power through in tier two onwards, and Stone Guard veterans are here for Angry Bird using those Hellfire rounds, but here's a Falcon, and that is annoying. Is he gonna get the missile launcher in response? He's switching to Vengeance rounds on his Stone Guard, doing that anti-vehicle damage. 178414 the Falcon able to tank quite easily. It is a pretty powerful vehicle in terms of firepower and durability. 500 hit points on this thing. There's a fair lick of damage as you can see. 178405. There's the smoke popped by the Razorback. Tactical Marines in retreat. Stone Guard veterans in retreat. And here are the Walk Spiders. Teleport infantry. Very good damage output. And they have that little bit of utility with that haywire and Eldar push through the mid Wraithlord versus Dreadnought down goes the Tech Marine he's using the global repair but the Wraithlord also getting repaired here by Dire Avengers now the chase is on it has the shoulder mounted Bright Lance also Dreadnought's gonna go down here I think yes and we see a sink kill Wraithsword straight through the sarcophagus there and then just pushes it over 178 393 very nonchalant sink kill there by the Wraithlord 2 to 1 for the old up. Final push did lose a lot there. That was pretty bad. Just got caught. Howling Banshee's running off. That Angry Birds Razorback just come mid. Can they get some rear arm hits with that spear? Wraithlord not wanting to chase there, which is smart because here come double missile launcher tactical marines for Noisy. He's got to get this kill here to make that payoff because that's 80 power spent on those missile launchers. 156393. West is very much red. Falcon pushing power here. Did they get the Wraithlord? They didn't get the Wraithlord. Here it is. 150393. The E cannon already up for Illithor. Adela still in tier 2, but he, he goes to the tier 3 now, in fact. Ortark still running around. She's level 2. Starts off with the power sword and that shuriken pistol. Here we see Noisy with the armored apothecary and something he really likes to use makes your apothecary incredibly quick. Runs around with that plus 1.5 speed. And you can see him firing his bolt and still getting that speed there. The combat flag is a bit wonky sometimes. 129393. Or top dropped. Is that a dealer? That stun grenade only hit one squad though. That was Twilight Elite. In fact, he sky leaped his war uh, and dropped her back down. That's why she's still level two. Good push here by Noisy on the west side alongside Angry Bird. And they are going to whack his power, I think. Can the Space Marines power back into this game? High powered shot on the Warlock, instant suppression, and he runs away. Warp throw on the field for Illithor and also for Tolali, also has the Witchblade of Kurnus. A dealer with the Warp throw, also have triple Warp throws here. Down goes all that power. Double missile launcher tactical marines and a Lazcan, and they have some serious anti vehicle. Maybe he's expecting some fire prisms. Bright Lance. Razorback has done well for Angry Bird. Seen a lot of Razorbacks recently as well. Avatar of Kane though is on the field for Illithor. That's going to be a pain in the ass. They do have a lot of anti-vehicle if you can get the Devastators into the mid. Double Rangers and Banshees chilling out. Illithor 
a bit slow to react and has to retreat out. Oh, he didn't want to do that there. Here comes the avatar. The cannon using the singularity, trying to wait for it to happen before it retreats. And there it is, beautifully hit. Scouts will survive though, as do those tactical marines on now level three. Wailing Doom hit the other tactical marine squad pretty nastily there. They need a heal. In fact, there's a drop pod to reinforce all of his marines. And there's a heal as well. Nicely done by Noisy Elmo. Level 5 upon the carry that level 5 heal is pretty nasty. Final push at the Predator tank. Raythord going after the Razorback. Chasing with that bright launch. 100% accuracy on the move. A very powerful anti-vehicle weapon there. Shoulder mounted. And down it goes. Haywire grenade on rear armor. And they... No, that's defend, is it? No. And they show no fear on those tactical marines. Force Commander still has his Thunder Hammer equipped. Also has Artificer and the Iron Halo. So he's pretty tanky and scary to fight in melee combat with that Thunder Hammer. Are they going to deal with this Avatar? I think they might because that's a Devastator last cannon firing. Two missile launcher tactical marine squads. Can they do it? Force Commander also chasing with that Power Melee Thunder Hammer. And the Avatar is a super heavy infantry unit. So taking a lot of damage from that power melee and they are going to take it down here surely no is he going to get away no one more missile does hit and down it goes that's a big victory for the space marines but can they push here red team still have the west side for the elder and they've stopped in this power now how much power income do they have plus 67 webway gate is up here but it's going to go down immediately you can see webway gates while they're being constructed Tactical Marines with Sergeant all around for everyone. No, this squad does not have their Sergeant. This squad does. And Stone God Veterans obviously do. Terminator Assault Squad on the field for Angry Bird. Caught in all sorts of trouble here though. The Singularity doesn't go off. And in fact, it does go off when they're in retreat. There you go. And that will fly even Terminators around. And it's taking shots by the Raythord. Can they turn and engage here? No, they can't. Here come Banshees. Do a lot of damage to vehicles with these Thunder Hammers, unlike the Force Commander Thunder Hammer, which is a power weapon. These Thunder Hammers are heavy melee weapons, and down they go. One model down. Banshee's chasing, so is the Raythor. This is not a good situation for these Terminators. They are unable to retreat. Already used their teleport, I believe. What is this? Is this a Venerable Dreadnought from Final Push? It is! Awesome! These guys might live. This Wraith Lord's down now. These are Vengeance Round, Stern Guard Veterans and Tactical Marines with a Missile Launcher and a Venerable Dreadnought. It's going to go down here. 75, 334 and we see another Sink Kill. Blocks the sword. Rips the Soul Stone out or something there. And down it goes. 75, 334. Grenade. Is that going to affect them? No, it doesn't because that shield is there. That's pretty annoying. Dark Creepers up for Redilla with the Aspect. 75, 3, 3, 4, but there's the 2 to 1 for the Eldar. How are they doing mid? D Cannon is up. Banshee sprinting up the. Wow, look how fast these Banshees are with swift movement up. That is nuts. 66, 3, 3, 4. Does swift movement stack with itself if all three players use it? Surely it doesn't. D Cannon set up. Red Team is. They're Dilla. Look how much stuff. This is all a Dilla. Bright Lance. Level 2 Banshees. Almost level 3. Just kitted out Warlock. Dire Avengers. Reapers. And Warp Spiders. Good luck assaulting that Angry Birdie. Does have Terminators. But they're having to be reinforced. Which is incredibly expensive. Here comes that Venerable Dreadnought. Not a good place for it to come. With the Haywire Grenade and that Bright Lance. Look at that, that is just three shots on the Bright Lance, four shots there, and there's the Haywire. That will completely disable the Venerable. It can still move, sorry, but it can't attack and moves much slower. Final push now supporting the west side. Tech Marine's going to die very quickly unless he moves. There's Mark Target on the Warp Spiders, but he's going to die here. Not paying attention, obviously. What is he paying attention to? Here's another Avatar. For Twala Leon, Illithor has another one on the way. 25334, not looking good for the Space Marine team. It's a 2 to 1 cap 
for the Eldar. Predator tank needs to back the hell away. Doesn't want to show rear armor. Boom, there's a rear armor hit. Banshee's chasing also. What is this? That's a warp throw indicator. Need to get used to the warp throw having that indicator there. Waiting Doom on retreating tactical marines. That is nasty. One of the best times to use your Wailing Doom is on a retreat. Ouch. 11 3 3 4. Some GG from the players. But Blue Team are taking the West spot. I don't think they can hold their natural. No, nope. there's a single. Hitting power just in case. Another Predator tank for final push. It was very difficult after he had that torrid engagement in mid when he lost. His Dreadnought and his Tech Marine tried to get tier 3 for the tanks and it almost worked. They put up a good fight there for the Eldar 2 do take it with a 2 to one cap. Let's have a look at the Commander's Force Commander level 3, Thunderhammer, Artificer and Iron Halo. Final push is Tech Marine, also level 3, Master Primary Bolter, Signum and Refractor Field. Apothecary level 7, Customized Storm Bolter, Armoury Apothecarian and that improved medical equipment. Warlock level 4. Just leveled up, it looks like. Had the Witchblade of Kurnus, Providence, and Warp Throw for Adila, so he completely changed out a lot of his war gear there. Level 6, Warlock for Twalali with exactly the same build. And Illithor's Warlock level 7 with the Kurnus and the Warp Throw. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in game 2.